next on It's Your Season. Losing balance is when you have a standard and your standard has been compromised because the signs of your time. I don't care how desperate you get if you buy yourself, stay by yourself until God can send that special someone, whether it be male or female, if you're a man, he brings that woman to balance and keep you balanced. If you get involved with anybody that keeps you away from the will of God, you're losing balance. Listen, greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm Bishop Keith Felton, Senior Pastor of Trinity Christian Center. I am so delighted to be bringing you the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Even in the midst of this pandemic, we've been preaching that which becomes a sound doctrine, not just locally, but around the nation, reaching millions by web television. And we're so delighted to be reaching you in your living room. Listen, this message I know is going to change your life. Listen, change the course of where you see things as God reveals himself through this message. Watch this. But I just wait is his delight. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I want to teach from the subject, losing balance tell somebody say losing balance it is it is amazing how we can go through the course of this life and begin to deviate from the very thing that gave us life that when we when we walk in with the lord god is a god of order he's a god of balance he's a god of making sure things are where they're supposed to be we see that in the first book of genesis where he restores the ecosystems of the world the Bible says, listen, uh, in the beginning, God, the Spirit of God moved over the face of the deep and said, let that be light. And light appeared and he began to put back the very thing that was destroyed or distraught on the face of the earth. He is a God that likes to see balance. He likes to bring light where there's darkness. He likes to put the moon in its respective places. He likes to hang the stars to illuminate the night sky to give it balance. You cannot have good without evil. Isn't it amazing? You cannot have good without evil. And even though we don't like evil, it is a balance that it brings. When you, get, when you look at your battery inside your car, you don't have two positive posts. You have a positive and a negative because the both posts or poles work off themselves. You have a north pole and a south pole. And do you not realize that all these things are put in place because to give the earth balance? Somebody say balance. And sometimes balance, is, it justifies things because it enables you to see different seasons. And if the ecosystem is off, we lose balance. We lose the transitioning from winter to spring to summer to fall. Sometimes when we were growing up, if it took spring a long time to get here or winter a long time to get out, the old folks will always say, we're living in the last days because you don't know what season is from the next. Do y'all remember that? Amen. Because they was talking about the balance has been thrown off. And, and I began to study this and I said God I know you've given me this before he said but moving towards the next year in 2021 God is looking at his people to maintain their equilibrium their balance uh, their wit about themselves their, their understanding of who they are and what were they brought here to do and, and understanding that I was saved for a purpose I was saved to do something great and listen magnanimous in the spirit of the Lord but when you begin to lose balance you begin to lose the sight of who you really are in Christ and how do you lose balance? I'm so glad you asked because you can be so pressured in your personal life until you lose, you lose balance in your public life. Your, 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 your personal life plays havoc in your public display. If you got something going on behind the scenes, behind closed doors, or if you got things going on in your finance, people will see the balance or the spiritual equilibrium of your life thrown off. They'll look at you and say, something is not right about you. Are you okay today? Because they can sense the balance that's not there. And balance just don't leave you just all of a sudden, bang, presto, change you. It is a process. People never crumble in a day. Cities never crumble in a day. It takes time sometimes to lose your balance. And my, my saints and friends of God that's listening and viewing by way of television, you have to understand that moving towards, listen, 2021, we have to maintain our spiritual balance. Somebody say, keep your balance. One of the things that I've learned about spiritual warfare is this. It, it uses your natural life to throw your spiritual cadence off. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Since the Lord's priest so adamantly, so eloquently wins the night and it began to it just affect my spirit, how she said how fear threw her off and fear threw her equilibrium off. It threw her way of seeing things off. Something so minute and inconspicuous as fear that God has not given us, but the enemy uses our situations to try to birth it over us. 
And it's so amazing how one drop of fear can throw your balance off so much that you forget who you are in Christ. Not in the crisis, but in Christ. Because the Christ in you will elevate you through the crisis that you're going through. But if you're thrown off at any measure of your life, you're going to lose focus and you're going to lose your faith and you're going to lose power. That's why the Bible said an unjust balance is an abomination. And an abomination is a strong sin. It is a str- it's right up there with the seven abominations that God doesn't like. And an unjust weight, an unjust balance that God does not want you to be too much of one thing and be less of the other. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? See, God does not want us to be church conscious but Christ unconscious. He wants us to be Christ conscious. And even though we're not being in the sanctuary as much as we would like to be in the sanctuary, we're conscious that our relationship does not reside in four walls and burning lights. This is just where we come together to collectively draw strength from each other, to encourage each other, to let somebody know that you can make it. The same God that's pulling you through this is the same God that pulled me out of it. And you have to understand we forsake not the assembly or gathering ourselves together because we draw strength. And sometimes that we're not able to draw strength from each other, there's some among us that can't get to church that are literally being thrown off their spiritual balance because it's doing something to their spirit that they can't come in the house of the Lord. I'm not preaching to anybody. It's doing something to their spirit that they can't commune with the same. It's doing something to their spirit that they can't hear the, the hand clapping and the shouting and the worship of the Lord. God said it's throwing their balance off. And when you lose balance, the principles that which you've been governed by does not affect you anymore. When you stop tithing, you enter into the curse. When you start wanting to give up your time, you enter into lethargicness or laziness or slothfulness and you begin your balance off. Have you ever been through something you say, I've got to get my mind back right. I got to get myself together. I got to, I got, I got to shake some things off of me because it's throwing me off. Uh, have you ever been around somebody that you had to get away from them because they're throwing you off? Uh, and no matter how much you try to get them out of your mind and out of your consciousness, you just have to remove yourself from that situation because it's throwing you off. Can I go a little bit deeper? You can be married and your husband can throw you off. You can be married and your wife can throw you off. Your kids can throw you off and make you get off balance. And now you're doing without thinking. It used to be you think before you did but now you're doing your actions are being moved before they're plotted because you're losing balance you're losing balance the most important thing that you have to understand is that Jesus Christ has to be the center and source of all your supply once you begin to lose balance you begin to take him out and start putting the job there you be start putting a man or a woman there. You start idolizing things that you need to listen, literally ignore because God said you're losing balance. And one of the signs you know you're losing balance, the thing that used to bring you great joy now is bringing you great pain. Some people are not coming back to church because they've been thrown off or their balance have been thrown off so much. Listen to this. Until they start criticizing the very thing that constructed them. Because when you're thrown off balance, you start to criticize things that really love you. You're losing your mind. You're losing your equilibrium. You're losing that thing, that, that thirst and the hunger that used to bring you. Now you're criticizing the very thing that once constructed you, that fortified you. Why? Because when you lose balance, you lose focus. And when you lose focus, the image of that thing changes that used to bring joy in your life. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? The first step to people breaking up in a relationship, breaking up in a marriage, is that man or woman looks at their significant other a different way. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. It got quiet in here. It's Christmas time, amen. This is a Christmas message. When you begin to go through things in your life and it affects the way you see your own personal life. That before the pandemic, we was high. We would love the Lord. We was high in the spirit. We was giving. We was doing what God called us to do. But now in the midst of the pandemic, it has thrown us off. We're losing balance. We're not, we, don't care, we don't care if we come back to the church. We're not losing that, we're losing that zeal. We don't pray like we used to do because we're literally losing balance. And God said that's an abomination before his sight. How could you be more job conscious than Christ conscious? How could you be more pandemic conscious than prayer conscious? How could you be more aware of the earthly things and not set your affections on things that are above? Easy, because when you lose balance, the thing that used to be used to get victory over is now winning you. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? When you lose balance, my last point is this. I'm not going to be before you long. My last point is this. Somebody say, mining me. 
It's something that I wrote down because God said, uh, when you lose balance, people begin to extract from you the things that they don't need to be extracted from you. And sometimes you get upset. Has anybody ever got upset because you was doing more for people than people were doing for you? And God said, now you're losing balance, baby. Now you're not, I need to whip you back into shape. Have you ever got mad with yourself for what you allow people to do to yourself? <laughs> And you get somewhere in the room, the lights doesn't even have to be on, and you just give yourself a spiritual wear now. And you say, Lord, I'm not going to let anybody use me. I'm not going to let them mine me. You notice what I said, mining me. That means the word mining means extracting precious gifts from your life, extracting your anointing, cutting out in the, in the crevices of your life things that they could benefit from, but never caring about the one that they're mining. When you denote mining, mining means that people go into a dark hole, Minister Patrick, and they take out gold, they take out diamonds, they take out precious jewels. But do you not know when you off balance or you're losing balance, you will allow people, oh my goodness, you will allow people to come in your life like people go into a mine and begin to chisel the very precious things from off of your life and you say, God, help me, I'm losing balance because they don't have no business in this part of my life. And God said, I have equipped you with every precious metal through Christ Jesus. I've given you anointing to break yokes and to destroy the hands of the enemy, but don't allow people to come inside you and mind you for your precious gifts and mind you for your minerals and mind you for your anointing and chisel away at the walls of your anointing and get what they need and leave you destitute and depleted and wanting more. And God said, you got to stop allowing people to mind your spirit. Yeah. Tell somebody, say, stop minding me. Stop taking your picks for and taking out my diamonds that God has given me. Stop taking out the gold that he's blessed me with. Stop taking out things that you didn't put in and now you want to take out. And that depletes you, but when you're losing balance, you let people take from you what they ought not touch. Mm. Somebody say, losing balance. Losing balance is when you have a standard and your standard has been compromised because the signs of your time. I don't care how desperate you get if you buy yourself, stay by yourself until God can send that special someone, whether it be male or female. If you're a man, he brings that woman to balance and keep you balanced. If you get involved with anybody that keeps you away from the will of God, you're losing balance. No one should have that much power to drag you to hell. No one should have that much power to stop you from coming to church and develop your prayer life and develop your gift to God. If he's that powerful, then he becomes your God or she becomes your God. But when you lose balance, you begin to entertain things that's not of God. God and you begin to lose balance by being moved by your situation and circumstance well you know he didn't want to come to church when well, he's not your husband yet and even though he was your husband you have to have enough wherewithal even if she's your wife you have to have enough wherewithal and say listen you can do what you need to do for you but I got to maintain my relationship with God and although I wear a ring and we said I do and we kissed and we cut cake and we drank and we danced and we did this and we did that and we exchanged our vows I cannot afford to allow you to cause me to go to hell I don't know who this is for but 2021 you cannot lose your balance over relationships you cannot lose your balance over this that and other you have to maintain your status you have to retain your commitment to God and say if God when God arrives all my enemies shall be scattered. Are y'all hearing, hearing what I'm saying? Tell somebody to say, I'm thrown off. You can entertain situations in your life that will throw you off. You, could, you can entertain job opportunities and, and befriend people on Facebook and it will throw you off. You can entertain certain things in your house and it'll throw you off. You can entertain certain movies and certain things in your house and you can look at a movie at the wrong time and that movie will throw off your prayer life. It'll throw off your consecration time because you become to watch more TV than you're developing in the spirit of God. And God said this year coming up, you cannot afford to lose your balance. You may find yourself doing things by yourself to keep balance. You may find yourself taking your own self out to eat, blowing out the candles on your own birthday cake to keep from losing balance. Because at this particular point in my life, tell somebody to say, my life, I can't afford to lose no more time than I've already lost. I got to make every moment count. I got to make every conversation count. I got to make things count that used to be uncounted for me. And God said, I need you to understand that the moment you lose balance, everything about you will change. Tell somebody to say, don't throw me off. Don't throw me off. Oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? Most of the things in the body of Christ, listen to this, I'm about to get out of your way. Most of the things in the body of Christ, 
that the men and women of God, if you have a prophetic mantle, a singing mantle, a preaching mantle, a, a, a logistics mantle, any mantle that you have over your life, the enemy knows it cannot destroy it. He, no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. And every tongue that rises against you shall be condemned. Tell somebody, say, we know that. So that means this, if you're listening, listen to this. So that means if you're truly anointed, if you're truly called by God, if it can't destroy you, it will distract you. Everything is a distraction. Everything is assigned by the enemy. He said, I can't destroy her. I tried to destroy her self-esteem. I tried to destroy his momentum, but I can't seem to put my finger on them that I can't destroy them. But what I can do, I can distract them. I can throw them off. I can have them to look at their life from a different perspective. Does anybody know what it feels like to be thrown off, to be doing good for a little while, and you entertain company, you entertain this, and it throw you off. And the enemy knows that they're so powerful that I can't kill them, but they're not aware that, listen, I can distract them. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Peter told, the, Peter told the listeners, he said, be sober, be vigilant. For your adversary is as a roaring lion seeking to destroy or devour whom he may devour. Now listen, that means that he said be sober. Be wits about yourself. Don't get drunk on life. Don't lose your balance. Because if you cannot, if you lose balance, you will be devoured by the very enemy. Because the enemy, I come to pull the covers off of this morning. The enemy can't destroy you. That's why car wrecks couldn't kill you. That's why depression couldn't kill you. That's why you had to throw away the bottle of pills when you wanted to take your own life because the enemy could not destroy you. Loneliness could not destroy you. People turning their back on you couldn't destroy you. The only thing that the devil can do is distract you before he... Oh my goodness. He wants to throw you off and does not care how he does it. Stay tuned. There's more to come. My goodness, you got to get this right here. Some of the things that you're going through and this relationship and this dispensation of your life, it shouldn't bother you as bad as it used to do me 10 years ago because you've not been through some stuff. Mainly that when your relationship with God is intact and you have the, the teaching and you have the foundation, God said, now I can deploy you to go into the hospitals to go into the sick rooms, to go into the cancer wars, to be able to deserve what you need to be around and not be around because you have the power to keep you. And if you don't trust God's judgment, you'll be shackled to a number and not chained to the name of Jesus. Oh, y'all got to get that right now. That's why right now, as even as I'm preaching this gospel right now, there's somebody who is sick to death with what they're doing. They're just so disgusted. And they may smile in front of your face. Oh, I got to go to work tomorrow. But down in the recesses of their spirit, they're so sick of the job. They don't know what to do because the plan of God is activated in their life. We want to thank you for your ongoing support and prayers as Bishop Felton takes the gospel around the world. Now, back to the message. Y'all sit down. I got to get this last point. <laughs> Lord have mercy. This is the Christmas and Dicky Rod, this is the Christmas. Amen. We we talking about Jesus. <laughs> One of the things in my prayer life, I, I begin to ask God to give me the wisdom to how to construct my life. Not ministry, but my life. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Listen, I want y'all to hear this because you're going to hear it again. God share with share with me this, this in prayer. Brother John, when he told me this right here, it changed my life. He said, when you stop connecting your don'ts, I'll start connecting your dots. Did y'all get that? He said, when you stop connecting your don'ts, meaning I don't want you to be in this relationship, stop connecting that. I don't want you to carry yourself, stop connecting that. And when you start, when you stop connecting your don'ts, I will connect your dots. But as long as you connecting don'ts, as long as you're connecting things that I didn't approve of, I can't connect your dots. Hmm. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? Aiden just in the spirit this morning. He just, he, the spirit done encapsulated his spirit. He don't know what to do. Amen. <laughs> Listen, God is saying right now, I need you to stop connecting the don'ts of your life so he can start connecting the dots 
over your life. Because God said, I can't connect the dot if you have a don't in your life. How can I connect dots in your life when you don't want the tithe? When you don't want to be in church? When you don't want to do what you want to do? I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. And it said, then I ask you, if any man will come out to me, he must first what? Deny himself, pick up his cross. Even when you don't want to pick up your cross, you got to pick up your cross so I can connect the dots in your life. And many of us are struggling right now because we're still doing what God don't want us to do and we're justifying our don'ts and we're praying to him to connect dots and God said, how can I connect your dot if you still do? Man, I'm going to stop right there. I think that's good enough right there. Oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? God said, don't do that, don't do that. And we're justifying the don'ts. And God said, now you're praying to me. He said, God, I need you to open up a door. Well, why, why don't you stop doing this? Why don't you stop cursing yourself? Why don't you stop praying? Why, 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 why do you want me to connect dots when you're still doing the don'ts that I don't want you to do? When you stop connecting your don'ts, I'll start connecting your dots. That's why we get confused. We say, I don't know what's going on. I'm in a dry place. You're not in a dry place. You have just become efficient in connecting what God don't want in your life. And he said that when you, when you give me what I want, I open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. But you got to see in your mind what God doesn't want. I don't need it in my life. Because when you start manifesting your don't, it'll, it'll, it'll hold you from the life that God has for you. It said, it seems like I'm stuck. You're not stuck. Tell somebody to say, you're not stuck. We just become efficient in doing what God don't want us to do. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? Most of y'all be seated. Listen, most of you who have raised kids or been in the presence of your kids, the only thing you, you want your kid to do is tell you the truth. Can, can I get a witness? How many mothers here just look at your children and say, they lie, and I know they lie. And you just let them talk. And in, them, in their own minds, they're making sense. And they think they peg you. But they don't know that you were them before they were them. I told Zaya, I said, listen, I was 16 before you. I was you before you were you. I mean, you, 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 me, the remix. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So that means you can't pull nothing over me because I've been where you at. You, if you live long enough, you get where I'm at. But you cannot pull the wall over my eyes. Oh, y'all hearing what I'm saying? Do you not know that when you lose balance, I'm going to end with this. When you lose balance, you begin to lie to God as if you're pulling the wool over his eyes. You begin to say, God, I love you. I place no one before you. God said, how can you say you love me when you don't do the things that I ask you to do? When you're filling your life with flesh and fantasy and not building it upon faith through Jesus Christ, that even if you have to walk by yourself, at least you're balanced. At least I'm bringing blessings in your life. At least you're the lender, not the bar. By yourself, with yourself. You don't have to worry about this, that, and the other. God says sometimes it is good to be by yourself so he may show up in the midst of your furnace, in the midst of your lion's den, and let people know who's fighting on your behalf. But when you lose balance, you lose the presence of God. You lose the provision of God. You lose the sustaining of God. Because you're out of covenant with God, and anything that's out of covenant, He does not cover. That's why it's so important to maintain our relationship with the Lord, maintain our spiritual status with the Lord. Listen, in the coming months, as we develop more at Trinity, and I believe that next year is going to be a year of development, a year of excellence, a year of when God takes this ministry to a whole nother level because I believe it with all my heart, and we're not going to lose balance. And when we do lose balance, we know how to correct it through prayer and fasting. Amen. Amen. But this year coming up, I ask God to God perfect that thing inside of me. I never allow me to be hung up on what I can't change, but give me the strength to change what I know I can change. For at the time that I have left, living for Jesus Christ and not for church approval means more to me than anything else. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And we understand that this life is, uh, is over before it gets started. Just when it gets good, it's over. So I encourage all of you, don't lose balance. Don't lose the equilibrium over your life. Don't let all these statistics of who's dying rattle your spirit. Just know this, out of 200 and so many thousands of people dying 
in the United States. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? Can we put that in retrospect? Let's put it on a, a biblical or spiritual perspective. There's 7.5 billion people on the planet. 600 million of them are what they say believers are born again. So that means that 98% of who, 98% of the world is going to hell. And 8% is going to heaven. That's a staggering number, isn't it? Amen. And, and this is the thing. Of the 8% that are quote-unquote believers, the statistics change because most people confess Christ, but they don't live for Christ. So that means that the number of people going to hell are staggered even more up to almost 99%. Why? Because he said many will come in that day and say, Lord, Lord, did we not cast out demons? Did we not do great exploits? And he said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And he's talking to those believers. My, how the time flies, but we're not out of word. I'm so excited to have brought to you the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. In the midst of this pandemic, the gospel is being preached, not just locally, but around the world. And you say to yourself, how can I get more preaching like this, more material? Stay tuned. The next voice you hear will guide you in how to acquire this message and many others for your video or just library in public. Listen until next Saturday on this station. It's your season. Thank you for tuning in to today's broadcast. We are so honored to have shared this time with you. If this message has truly blessed you and you desire a copy as well as other ministry materials, please stay tuned. You can entertain situations in your life that will throw you off. You can, you can entertain job opportunities. And, and be for your love gift of any size, you will receive this message in its entirety on CD. Friend people on Facebook and it will throw you off. You can entertain certain things in your house and it'll throw you off. You can entertain certain movies and certain things in your house and you can look at them. For your love gift of $25, we will send you this dynamic message on CD and DVD. It's a crazy time because you become to watch more TV than you develop it in the Spirit of God. And God said, this year coming up, you cannot afford to lose your balance. You may find yourself doing things by yourself to keep balance. And when your love gift is $50, we will send you this message on CD, DVD, and this inspiring book by Bishop Felton. We want to thank you for your ongoing support and prayers as Bishop Felton takes the gospel around the world. Until next time, it's your season.